Ladies and gentlemen, let's take Tribunal where we're going to be taking a look at the R7 250X versus NVIDIA's GTS 740. If you need more specifications of the cards, if you want to take a look at additional benchmarks that we just couldn't fit into this video, information regarding the testing systems, lots of images of the card as well as the box art, benchmarking settings as well as driver revisions and so on and so forth definitely check out the article which is linked in the video's description we're going to start things out discussing the r7 then we're going to move to the gt and then we're going to be giving uh, my thoughts and opinions as kind of a roundup so first things first we might as well start with the r7 so this is basically a rebadge of the hd 7770 um, also known as the cape verde here we're using a 1 gigabyte GDDR5 model. It has 640 sh unified shaders and does indeed come with 16 ROPs and 40 TMUs. 128 bit bus does provide 72 gigabytes of memory bandwidth per second, which is a little bit of a pinch, but fortunately it doesn't seem to hamper performance too badly. And we can go into clocks in just a moment. It does require, just like the GT740, a one six pin PCIe connection. As I've mentioned, this model is one gigabyte. There are two gigabytes available. In terms of the GT740, meanwhile, it has 384 um, CUDA cores. It's worth remembering CUDA cores and shaders are a little bit different, so you can't gauge them like for like. It has 80 gigabytes of memory bandwidth um, per second. That's on a 128-bit bus as well, 16 ROPs, 32 TMUs, and once again, it does support hardware, uh, hardware physics, CUDA, and so on. With both cards, despite the fact that they do support Mantle and hardware physics, you're probably not going to want to really test out, for example, hardware physics too much because it's going to be extremely taxing on the GPU and it just doesn't really have the additional grunt to really make use of it, at least in my personal opinion. Frame rates of both cards were pretty comparable for the most part, but I definitely have to give the slight nod to AMD. It's not to say that it stomps it. I'd, I'd want to make that clear. There isn't. It's not a case where AMD's card is significantly faster in all tests. Um, the, probably the biggest difference was in Tomb Raider, where we got 38.1 average versus 26.1. However, in other games, for example, Batman Arkham Origins, the GT740 had a couple of frames a second uh, over the R7. And in other games, for example, Metro Last Light, there was a couple of frames a second difference and so on. If you need more of these specs, uh, sorry, of these results, please check out the article. I've got lots to talk about in a short space of time. Both cards are whisper cop. Uh, whisper quiet even if you um, put the fans to both cars to 100% we can barely hear them these are gigabyte models so everything's fair here 100% fan you can barely hear them even if you're putting your head literally against the side of the case they're also very small we've got comparison shots inside the article with both cars uh, sitting right next to a GT 760 so if you want to see just how small these cars are and how they'll easily fit in a HTC or a small form factor case, then you are more than welcome to check that out. Speaking of which, these cards are absolutely perfect for that. If you're interested in light gaming, if you want to play something like Dota 2, then they pack more than enough grunt. I've got to say that I was extremely impressed with Tomb Raider. It ran absolutely flawlessly, particularly on the R7 250X. In fact, with pretty much all of the settings set to Ultra and FXAA turned on, it hit over 38 frames a second, which is very impressive. In terms of overclocking, unfortunately, the GT740 doesn't support either power limit changes or voltage core changes, and that definitely does limit the overclock a little bit. We managed to get an extra 90 on the core, which it did translate, as you would expect, to additional frame rate. However, the R7 was an absolute monster for overclocking. All right, literally speaking, the memory hit 6,000 megahertz. It was literally as high as the scientists would go. And the core to hit 1,245 megahertz without adjusting the fan profile at all, simply cranking up the core voltage and power limits. So it's possible we could get a little bit more out of it 
out of it if we tried. I will say, however, of course, overclocking is always a silicon lottery, and your results may well differ from mine. You may get better or inferior results to what I did. If you are purely looking for performance in Upwards Gaming and you have no other considerations, you're just looking for the best gaming performance possible, then R7250X is definitely the better card to go for. If, however, you have other considerations, for example, you might want to mess around with having a set secondary card for CUDA. Uh, you might want to, for example, program in CUDA and so on then you might prefer Nvidia's card and you're definitely not going to be getting a slouch. Just ensure that you get the GDDR5 version and don't get go for the slightly cheaper yet infinitely inferior DDR3 version of this card. Overall, I have absolutely no issue recommending either of these two GPUs. They're absolutely awesome at giving the price point. Once again, if you're looking purely for gaming performance, however, you would have to go, in my personal opinion, with AMD. Interestingly enough, I did notice color differences once again between them in terms of the contrast and overall color range. I've noticed this a couple of times with AMD to NVIDIA cards. I normally game on a GTX 780 Ti, but throughout the video you're definitely going to see slight color differences. It's a little bit odd. These are default profiles, by the way, I haven't messed around with them. It's literally just a default driver install from a fresh installation of Windows. So make of that as you will. In the case of the R7250X, there are two models available for this, the one gigabyte and the two gigabytes. In my personal opinion, given the actual graphical settings you're gonna be using, one gigabyte is most likely going to be more than sufficient. The only slight downside to both of these cards is for a slightly higher price, you could go with a much better card, say, if you wish to spend an extra $30 or $40, you could go for, say, the, um, 260 but then the thing is you're spending extra money and you can always argue if you're going to spend more money you could get a better card so if you were to then put the extra 40 towards and go for the 260 you could then argue once again if i'm going to put another 40 towards this i could get a much better card and so it's an infinite cycle so for this price point if you've got a hard limit of around 100 dollars you want a good performing card that's going to be capable of playing a variety of different games. Either of these cards would be absolutely perfect additions to your rig, but I would give the slight nod to the R7250X because it definitely offers a slightly higher performance. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and a share, and definitely check out the article if you need additional information to this. I'll see you soon. Take care, and bye for now, my friends.